Bhagavad-gītā, chapter 7, text 9. Punyogandha prithivyāṁca Tejaschāsne vibhāvaso Jīvanam sarvabhūteshu Tapaschāsne tapasvishu Punyaha, original Gandha, fragrance, Prithivyam, in the earth, Cha, also, Teja, heat, Cha, also, Asmi, I am, Vibhavasa, in the fire, Jivanam, life, Sarva, in all, Bhuteshu, Living entities, Tapa, penance, Cha, also, Asmi, I am, Tapas Vishu, and those who practice penance. Translation and work out by the Vangra Sensi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Translation I am the original fra- fragrance of the earth, and I am the heat in fire. I am the life of all that lives, and I am the penances of all ascetics. Please repeat, I am the original fragrance of the earth, and I am the heat in fire. I am the life of all that lives, and I am the penances of all ascetics. Purport. Punya means that which is not decomposed. Punya is original. Everything in the material world has a certain fragrance, as the fragrance in a flower or in the earth, in water, in fire, in air, etc. The uncontaminated fragrance, the original fragrance which permeates everything is Krishna. Similarly, everything has a particular original taste and this taste can be changed by the mixture of chemicals. So everything has some original fragrance and taste. Vibhavasu means fire. Without fire, we cannot run factories, we cannot cook, etc. And that fire is Krishna. The heat in the fire is Krishna. According to Vedic medicine, indigestion is due to a low temperature in the belly. So even for digestion, fire is needed. In Krishna consciousness, we become aware that earth, water, fire, air and every active principle, all chemicals and all material elements are due to Krishna. The duration of man's life is also due to Krishna. Therefore, by the grace of Krishna, man can prolong his life or diminish it. So Krishna consciousness is active in every sphere. <clears throat> so let's uh, study this verse. Punyo gandha prithivyam cha. So it's interesting that the word punya is translated as original, because we know punya as pious. So. If you see the word pious also, there are different kinds of piety also. There is one that is the karmi piety, which is just to have a life in the mode of goodness predominantly. That is also called punya in one sense. But that is only in reference to our original nature, our original constitutional state, which is actually in the mode of pure goodness. That's why even um, hearing and chanting about Krishna, it is explained that it is Punya Shravana Kirtana. Shrinvatam Svakatha Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. The pious activity of hearing and chanting about Krishna. What happens? Hridyantha Sthohi Abhadrani Vithunoti Sukrit Satam. Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma, 
of super soul in everyone's heart and the benefactor of the truthful devotee cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. So here, the hearing and chanting is called as Punya Shravana Kirtana. Now this is not ordinary pious activity. Ordinary pious activity may get us to the heavenly planets. In fact, that is the way one can travel within this material world. The qualifications, just like every country has qualifications, um, and there are visa immigration procedures. So similarly, if we have to go anywhere in this material universe, the qualifications, the visa documents, all these are actually based on Sattvam, Rajavam, Tamavam. Urdham gachanti sattvastha, madhye tishthanti rajasa, jaghanya gunavrittistha, adho gachanti tamasa. Bhagavad Gita 14.18 said here, Those situated in the mode of goodness gradually go upward to the higher planets. Those in the mode of passion live on the earthy planets. And those in the abominable mode of ignorance go around to the hellish worlds. So this Sattvagun, Rajagun, Tamagun is the, the three modes of material nature. This is actually the basis of all our, um, our life, our, our kind of species, our kind of association, our kind of everything is within these three modes. So punya means those who come closer to our original state. So that's where it comes from, the word punya. And punya shravana kirtana, the the process of hearing and chanting, that is the most original or the constitutional position. So punya gandha, in today's verse, punya gandha means the original fragrance, prathivyam, cha. Now this is important, why earth, original fragrance of the earth? Because actually fragrance comes from the earth. If you, this is very nicely analyzed in the Srimad Bhagavatam, how each of our senses interact with each of the sense objects and which of the five material elements bring forth which kinds of sense objects. So, we have five According to science, we have five senses, modern science. But according to Vedas, we call them Jnanendriyas or senses for acquiring knowledge, knowledge acquiring senses. They are not just called senses, knowledge acquiring senses. Because with those five senses, what are they? Eyes, ears, nose, tongue and touch, skin. So, with these we can understand our surroundings we can know about our surroundings. So therefore they are called Jnana Indriya. Jnana Indriya. Indriya means senses, Jnana means knowledge. Now there are also five working senses. Karma Indriya. And the definition of senses or sense is actually more complete in our Sanskrit, in our Vedic culture than in the modern science. In the modern science, it is just these five things. But in the um, Vedic understanding, it is anything that with which you interact with this world. So there are interactions where we take in knowledge and there are interactions with which we output something. Input and output, I.O. In uh, technical terms, they say I.O. Input and output. So input, they are called Jnanendriya and output they are called karmendriya. So as we know the five senses, these are knowledge acquiring senses. The five karmendriya or the um, working senses are um, speech. So although it is tongue, tongue for tasting which is input, but speech is output, same tongue, but do different um, activities. So speech and then there are hands with which we manifest something or break something or whatever, we interact with the world, with this material nature. Then there are legs with which we move in this material world. And then there are there is the genitals with which reproduction happens. And then there is anus with which the digestive system is kept in order. 
So, we may say, why are the other things are not called senses? What about the heart? What about the digestive system? What about the liver? What about this and that? Now, they are all the internal workings of the body. But there is no external, visible external uh, interaction with the outside world. Mm. So, the visible interaction with the outside, uh, with the material nature, that is done through these five working senses. Hands, legs, speech, genitals and anus. So, Jnanendriya and Karmendriya. Now, in this Jnanendriya, in order for us to acquire knowledge, so it is nicely explained in the Bhagavatam in the third canto, where the creation is explained in very extreme detail. It is not some vague uh, explanation like this, something big bang, something exploded and things came into existence in perfect order. And so, so we don't subscribe to such um, foolish theories. So there is a deliberate intelligence behind this creation that we understand. And and very logical explanation of how everything happens. Now, there are five sense objects. Sound is ma- uh, perceived by the ears. So the su- uh, ears are the sense senses sense, and the sound is a sense object which is perceived with that ear. Yeah? Then with the skin touch, there is. Uh, what is that? Touch actually. Touch is the uh, sense object and skin is the sense. And then there is form. And form is perceived by the eyes. Taste is perceived by the tongue. And smell is perceived by the nose. Now, another layer to this. The five Panchabhuta. Panchabhuta are the five gross elements. Gross is used in the matter of like something disgusting. But in this sense, it is not exactly disgusting, but it is more tangible. The, the material elements are divided into two classes. The jada, um, what is that? Or um, <coughs> actually the Sanskrit word is jada. Jada means dull. Uh, jada bhuta and sukshma bhuta. So there are pancha jada bhuta, pancha mahabhuta also it is called, which is earth, water, fire, air and ether. And then there is sukshma bhuta, which is mind, intelligence and false ego. So mind, we all know it is there, but we can't see it, hear it, touch it, taste it, smell it, but we know it is there. So this is subtle, more subtle than any of the five senses can perceive. Now, <coughs> intelligence is even higher. Uh, in, in modern understanding, I think in the psychology there is not much distinction between mind and intelligence. But in our Vedic understanding, we understand that intelligence and mind are two separate things. Uh, mind is just a factory of desires. It can be very rational as well. But intelligence is the rational part of the human being. Not only human being, even the animals. Of the soul, basically. In this material world. And then false ego is even more subtle. The misidentification. False ego. Ego means identity and false means our false identification with this matter. To think that I am the body. To think that I belong to a certain nationality. Or a race or a gender or a species. These are all misidentifications. And that's what, not, that's what we are not. We are not this body. That's the first understanding in spiritual life. So that's where Krishna begins his uh, instruction. That we are not this body. So false ego is very subtle, this misidentification. And the soul is even more subtle, which we actually are. So anyway, in the Pancha Mahabhuta, which is the five gross elements, and then there are three subtle elements. So in the five gross elements, let's take ether, which is the most subtle. Ether is most subtle of all the five elements. It can only be perceived by the ear. Because sound travels in ether. So only one sense can perceive um, the presence of ether. By the presence of sound. 
in the in the air ether air next is air in air there are two things sound and touch so we can perceive air with two senses we cannot see it we cannot taste it we cannot smell it sometimes we can smell we say we can smell but actually there is a mixture of the earth and the air and that's why we can smell the air <coughs> so that's actually a mixture originally air cannot be um, perceived by smell so it's only by touch and sound now next comes form fire fire has form it has a shape and then it has the sen- we can perceive it through touch also we feel the heat and then we can hear also so three senses can perceive fire then comes water which is more tangible or more gross in this translated like that so it is it can be sen- <coughs> perceived by four senses sound i mean the ears the um, touch the skin the eyes and taste tongue and then the earth has all these other four plus fragrance so as we come from sukshma to jada it becomes more and more tangible and what is the definition of more and more tangible more and more senses more and more of our five senses can perceive the presence of it and sukshma means none of these five can perceive the presence like mind intelligence and false ego and what to speak of the soul and this is why we can't see the soul with our naked eyes it's not our naked eyes it's our material eyes our real naked eyes are the spiritual eyes this material body is like vasam sujirna nikatha vihaya vasam se means like the clothes so through these lens of the material eyes we can't see the soul what to speak we can't even see the mind how can we see the soul that does not mean it is not there we should understand the constitutional characteristic positions of these things then we know why we can't see and how to qualify we can qualify it's not that we eternally can't see no there is qualification by which we can see originally the uh, the soul is not blind the soul can see soul and can, the soul can see god also people people say show me god with our material senses we can't even see our mind what to speak of intelligence what to speak of false ego what to speak of the soul and what to speak of the super soul so we should not rely on our materialistic senses to see god or to see our soul so of course there is a qualification at at which stage one can actually see god with the spiritual eye and that is explained in the brahma samhita प्रेमाजन छुरीत भक्ति विलोचन सन्त सदैव हृदय विलोकयती यम श्याम सुंदरमचिंद्य गुणस्वूपम गोविंदमादिपुरुषम तम गजा सो हि प्रेमाजन छुरीत भक्ति विलोचन दिस् इज द रियल आय ऑफ द सोल bhakti vilochana vilochana means um, eyes bhakti vilochana means one which is anointed with bhakti so that which is beyond our sensory perception is called achintya which is called inconceivable or adhokshaja the lord's another name is adhokshaja what is the meaning of adhokshaja adhah krita अक्षज ज्ञान अधोक्षज स्मृत द डेफिनेशन ऑफ अधोक्ष अध कृता अक्षज ज्ञान अक्षज ज्ञान मीन्स वाट ज मीन्स बिगिनिंग विथ स्टार्टिंग विथ सो अक्षज बिगिनिंग विथ द आईज अक्ष मीन्स आईज सो विथ आईज नोज एंड ऑल द सेंसेस सो विथ अवर सेंसेस वी कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द लॉर्ड अधः कृता अधः मीन्स बिलो दट मीन्स द पर्सन हू रेंडर्स ऑल 
uh, sensory knowledge as insufficient to reach him, he is called Adhoksus. Everything falls short, everything falls below. So that is Atha. Akshaja Jnanam, beginning with the eyes, so with our sensory perception, we cannot understand the Lord. Another meaning of Akshaja means the alphabets of Sanskrit. Where just like we say A to Z in English. So similarly, in Sanskrit, the first letter is A and the last letter is Ksha. The, first the vowels are mentioned and then the consonants. So the vowel, vowel starts with A and the consonants end with Ksha. So A Ksha from A to Z, from the means any amount of material explanation with any amount of material explanation which include debates, which include essays, which include all kinds of philosophies and explanations, whatever it is or even scriptures, we cannot understand the Lord. There is a nice verse in Mahabharata. Tarko pratishtha shrutayo vibhinna nasa vrishiryasya matam nabhinnam dharmasya tattvam nehitam guhayam mahajano yena gatah sapantha You see this, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quoted this verse from uh, Mahabharata. Dry arguments, which are again, what are them? Composition of words, whether by arguments, whether by poetry, by prose, by any amount of literary work and what to speak? Tarka apratishtha, shrutayo vibhinna, shrutaya means the scriptures which are also again combination of words, scriptures. Shrutayo vibhinna, so apratishtha means, pratishtha means to establish, apratishtha means we cannot establish, not possible to establish. Tarka, tarka means argument, debates. Tarko apratishtha, we cannot establish the real religious principles based on just arguments or debates or poetry or prose or anything. Words. Shrutayo vibhinna. Shrutayo means scriptures. Vibhinna means by studying various amount of scriptures. Every, uh, what is that? Um, interreligious uh, study. One can read all scriptures of the world, but still one will not understand what is the religious principle actual religious principle. Nasa vrishiryasya matam nabhinnam If I go to one philosopher, he will say one philosophy. If I go to another philosopher, he will say a different philosophy. If he says the same philosophy, he, the people will call him copycat. So he will invent his own philosophy to sound more intelligent. Oh, this is my take. You know, what is your take? You know. What, where is the qualification of that person before he can op- opinionate on something? Nobody checks. They call him political pundits or religious pundits. Pundits has become a cheap word nowadays. So, by studying Vedas, by debates, by listening to so many words of the different philosophers, we cannot understand. Nasa vrishriya samatam nabhinam dharmasya tattvam nihitam guhayam The real truth of religious principles is carefully hidden in the heart of Mahajan. Mahajano yena gata sapantha. Those who are surrendered devotees of Krishna, they are called Mahajan. Mahatma. That is defined by Sri Sri Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Bahunam janmanamante jnanavan maam prapadyate vasudeva sarvamiti sa mahatma sudurlapaha. Who surrenders to me after knowing completely what is what. He understands that I am the source of everything and he surrenders it to me. Ah, yes, he is the Mahatma, Mahajan. Mahatma Anastamam Partha Daivim Prakriti Mashrita Bhajanti Ananya Manaso Gyatva Bhutadim Avyayam 9.13 and 7.19 of Bhagavad Gita. So, what is the activity of Mahatmas? They are always under the protection of Yoga Maya, not under Maham. Mahamaya. Everybody in this world is under Maya, illusion. 
But Yoga Maya is the opposite of that. There is another energy of the Lord called Yoga Maya. She helps us or facilitates our remembrance of Krishna. Maya facilitates our forgetfulness of Krishna. So the devotees are always under the protection of Yoga Maya. Mahatmanas to Mahapartha Daivim Prakritim Ashrita. Bhajanti Ananya Manaso. They always worship the Lord. They don't waste time in you know unnecessarily doing some useless activities in this world. Bhajanti Ananya Manaso. Without, without any interruption, they only serve the Lord. Jnatva Bhutadima Vyayam. O son of Pritha, those who are not deluded, the great souls are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. So, one who is a Mahajan or Mahatma like this, according to the definition of Bhagavad Gita, uh, he is, uh, in India of course, there is one political person who was called Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi. So, that is not qualification of Mahatma. People may call him Mahatma out of sentiment. But according to Krishna's classification, he is not Mahatma. Now people may like it or not like it, but it is not our business. Now the thing is, Mahatma is defined by Krishna here. Those who, they don't have nothing to do with, you know, mundane political wrangling. They have nothing to do with that. Uh, Mahatma is one who is 100% surrendered. In fact, Srila Prabhupada, our spiritual master, he wrote a letter to Gandhi just one month before his passing away. He wrote to him a long letter. In fact, that letter is also there in the record. He said, see, you have fought for Indian independence, you got it. Now, give up, give up this political career. Since you have fame and people know you, Why don't you use that fame to teach the people about Bhagavad Gita? Enough of this political thing. These things will go on in life, you know, in this world. But the real thing is to make, awaken people to God consciousness. So why don't you do that? It is high time you retire from politics. He wrote to him. And he even warned him, if you do not do so, I am afraid our own countrymen will kill you. He actually... It was when it actually happened one month later, it was like a prophecy. I mean, Prabhupada knew a pure devotee is, uh, you know, by the mercy. Prabhuji, decide, decide. Please sit, decide. So, a pure devotee, by the grace of Krishna, becomes Trikalagnya. Trikalagnya means one who knows past, present, and future. Trikala. Trikala means, Kala means time. Trikala means the three phases of time. In the past, the present and the future. So, Prabhupada could see that this is going to happen. And there is immense evidence for similar things in history. So, he warned him like that. But there was no reply from Gandhi. And eventually, one month later, he actually passed away. Short, short death. So, anyway, Mahatma means this one who surrenders to Krishna. So, such Mahatmas know what is the real truth about religious principles. Just by, uh, in, what is that? Uh, unguided study of the Vedas, we cannot understand these things. please come sit down. Somebody guide now and some people are coming, otherwise I have to do this sitting down here. <coughs> so, Mahajano Yenagata Sapantha. So, Adhokshaja means who just cannot be understood by just unguided study of all the words or with our experimentation. Some people are philosophical, religious, they study, try to study all the books and try to understand. They cannot understand. Vedeshu Durlabham. And the scientists, for example, today, they also Aksha Jagyanam. Hmm. They are into observation and experimentation. They also cannot understand. So, because our senses fall short in understanding the Supreme Lord, 
and that's why his name is Adhoksha. It's very how meaningful you see the word Adhoksha. Hmm. So we shouldn't be proud of our senses and demand that, oh, show me God. We should understand the factual um, positions of what instruments we have. If I don't have a microscope and I say, show me bacteria, show, a challenge. I cannot say, I don't have the instrument, <laughs> I don't have the faculty. <laughs> I cannot challenge just simply like an idiot. So we should not be challenging like an idiot about, oh, show me God, show me God. Where do we become qualified? Get the instrument. What is the instrument? Premanjana Charita Bhakti Vilochane. And let's go back to that verse. See, I worship, this is spoken by Lord Brahma himself. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is Shamsundar, Krishna himself, with inconceivable, innumerable attributes, whom the pure devotees see in their heart of hearts, with the eye of devotion tinged with the salve of love. This is not some, you know, some vague, um, vague, some hotspots, something. No, it is a real thing. People can actually see. Hmm. If we qualify ourselves, we can see God. We just need to qualify ourselves. Morning also we were mentioning the same thing. If I cannot see the Prime Minister of Singapore, and I say there is no Prime Minister of Singapore, I don't believe. You show me, ask him to come here. Why you will come? No, no, no. If I qualify myself to have the audience of the Prime Minister, maybe I do something, some some honourable thing and then he gives me an award and then I can see him on the stage there, personal. I should work in such a way that I attract his attention. I should be true to my work in order to attract my attention of the Prime Minister. And then I can see him. By his grace, he will invite. Please come and take the award. I will get invitation, I will go there and then I can see him. So, Prabhupada's Guru, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he used to say, don't try to see God. Act in such a way that God wants to see you. Become worthy. Become worthy of being seen by God. Of course, God sees everyone. But if we want to see God, then it, ha- it has to be only by the mercy of the Lord. He has to sanction it. He is the sanctioner. Ultimate sanctioner of everything. So, and Krishna is also teaching. Now, if you, if we, if we leave it at that, saying that okay, act in such a way that God wants to see you. Okay, I'll do something good. I'll, let let me open some schools or hospitals. No, no, no. First, know what what is the activity that that will attract God. <laughs> Don't do something manufactured in your brain. We can't just imagine that this will be pleasing to God. No, we have to ask from Him how what is what is pleasing to you. You may ask, I can't even see God, what to speak of hearing Him, what to speak of asking Him and how will I know? And that's why He left the Bhagavad Gita for us. For us who are not qualified to see Him, He being kind enough, He is willing to talk to us even though we are not qualified to see Him. And therefore He left the Bhagavad Gita. You think Arjuna is a fool? That He needs enlightenment? He doesn't need enlightenment. He is personal friend of Krishna. Krishna Surya Sama, Maya Andhakar. Jahan Krishna Tahan Nahi Maya Radhika. Krishna is like the sun. When you are facing God, what ignorance can you be in? Then how, how come Arjuna was in ignorance? He was not. The fact that he was not. Uh, the real fact is, he was made an instrument to ask questions on our behalf. Because we are the rascals, we are the fools, we are the idiots who have gone against him and we are we, unwilling to listen to him. For our benefit, he has spoken the Bhagavad Gita so that we can understand. And he made Arjuna seemingly confused. It's all a drama. Krishna comes here and acts a nice drama. And he goes. He apparently, he stayed here for 125 years on the earth in manifest form when people could see him physically. Now, 
he did not want only those souls who were born as his contemporaries at that time be uh, blessed by his presence no he wanted to bless all of future so all the souls are coming come in the future and therefore he left the scriptures therefore he not only left the scriptures because if you leave the scriptures people will misinterpret and destroy that also and that happened nowadays nobody understands uh, what is scripture so therefore he will send acharyas great teachers from the spiritual world he sends them as missionaries to awaken the population to god consciousness and shri prabhupada is like that he came and single handedly re spiritualized the whole world single handedly he is the only one who brought the true krishna conscious vedic culture to the entire world there are many so called yogis babas and swamis and but they just uh, spoke some hotchpotch nonsense and still it is going on such such uh, such uh, um, people in the name of so called religionists or religious leaders now it is the do through social media hmm. still going on but they don't at all present the real message of the bhagavad gita or shrimad bhagavad none of them but shri prabhupad did that is not at all his fellow is just a fanatic is because he is a follower of prabhupada he is saying only he is only person who is doing it usually we indians they what they, whom they quote vivekananda people only glorify vivekananda because they actually do not know what are the contents of bhagavad gita if you at all know what is the content of bhagavad gita you will know that vivekananda completely misrepresented it has nothing to do with the bhagavad gita message in fact it is opposite the problem is people get oh how can you say vivekananda is no, not correct and all that don't get sentimentally just you know emotionally agitated first understand what are facts in so called hinduism today there is a lot of hotchpots in the name of religion not one person knows one shloka of bhagavad gita and they think that they know everything about the religion so much to the extent that the name of the religion itself they do not know what religion hindu hindu dharma where is the word hindu in the whole of scripture in the vedas in the upanishads in the puranas in the mahabharata ramayana itihasas where agamas not a single word hindu was there in the entire scripture and we are saying i am hindu this is our so called india now they don't even know the name of the religion what to speak of any contents thereof we are actually sanatan dharma sanatan dharma means it is for eternal eternity there is no start date of this so called religion it is an eternal constitutional position of the living entity and it is known every other so called religious system that exists in the planet is an offshoot of the sanatan dharma and the word hindu was given by the muslims the pathan muslims from the persia when they came they referred to the sindhu river sindh river now it is sindh river in pakistan in actually in vedic reference it is called sindhu river one of the seven holy rivers of india bharat and that sindhu river <coughs> runs from north to south and people on the western side the pathan muslims they used to refer to the people on the eastern side as hindustan because the word the way they say sindhu um, they pronounce it as hindu hind like that and then sthan means just a place a country a region that's all hindustan just to it's a, it was geographical reference to the people of india bharat and it became sthan place of hindus uh, country of hindus and religion is named as hindus from where you got it so we have to first of all accept that we are completely ignorant and learn from scratch unlearn whatever we have so called learned with our so called family traditions so called sentimental blindly following something without any understanding of the facts from the scriptures you have to unlearn all of that and learn from the proper source again then yes it will be set in proper order again there was a nice story which i which which um, illustrates this thing <coughs> so what happened in one house there was a black cat black 
and this black cat the 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 woman of the house before she starts cooking she will tie the black cat to the tree in the compound she will tie the black cat and start cooking <coughs> now her son was grown up and uh, got married so the daughter in law came to the house so of course uh, especially in indian culture the daughter in law should you know learn the customs of the husband's house and follow those customs so she saw the mother in law always tying the black cat before starting to cook so she thought in this house the custom is that the black cat should be tied to the tree before cooking should start so one day the cat died cat died um so this this lady brought one another cat black cat and started tying to the tree and started cooking the mother in law why did you bring this cat no i thought this is the custom of this house that cat was always disturbing when i cook it will come and take all the things in the kitchen that's why i was tying the cat why did you with the cat died why did you bring another cat this is called blindly following without understanding the reason why it was done if we follow like this oh my grandfather said that's why we are also following this thing my my mother said my grandmother said who cares about grandmother mother the thing is what krishna did what did he say hmm. we have to know what the truth is where is the starting or where is actually the real source of knowledge uh, so we have to accustom or acclimatize ourselves with the, the real hmm. thing <clears throat> sometimes when we you know we we give our life for this purpose and sometimes family members they say oh how is this you know you are not satisfying parents you know you are not satisfying or you have uh, changed some uh, <clears throat> our family tradition is one you have you have gone against the family tradition and you are not uh, you are disobeying the parents and all that but let's see where the disobedience was krishna is our real parent and he is explaining in bhagavad gita what is actual religious principle and generations and generations everybody has been disobeying without understanding and now if somebody is following or obeying those instructions people think oh you have you are discontinuing the tradition but what was the tradition a tradition of disobedience should i follow the tradition of disobedience the real tradition was already gone way before hmm. so now it is being revived but they don't see this so um, there is so much misconception about religion because of this but krishna is giving <coughs> although we cannot perceive the lord with our senses krishna is giving us the hints how to start perceiving his presence now we can't see god right we have to qualify ourselves to see god how to qualify ourselves krishna says very simple thing you see Nine dot thirty-four. Man mana bhava madbhakto madhyaji mam namaskuru mame vaisya si yukti vayam atmanam matparayana. Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Become my devotee. Offer obeisances to me and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. And when we go to him, of course we can see him. Same thing he repeats again in the eighteenth chapter. मन्मनाभवक्त मध्याजी मं नमस्कुर मे वैश्य सत्यम ते प्रतिजाने प्रियोसी मे ओनली द लास्ट टू लाइन्स आर स्लाइटली चेंज ऑलवेज थिंक ऑफ मी बिकम माई डिवोट यू वर्शिप मी एंड ऑफर यूर होम इज एंड टू मी दस यू विल कम टू मी विदउट फेल आई प्रॉमिस यू दिस बिकॉज यू आर माई वेरी डियर फ्रेंड सो दिस इज हाउ वी हैव वी कैन सी गेट द ऑडियंस ऑफ द लॉर्ड वी कैन सी हिम we have to understand we can only see him by his mercy his sanction not with our strength or our instruments of telescope or microscope or whatever scope there is no scope is <laughs> out of scope <laughs> so the only way is premaan janak churita bhakti vilochane <clears throat> then what happens athapite deva padambujadvaya prasad leshanugrihita eva hi जानाति तत्व भगवन्मो न चान्ये कोपि चिरन विचिन्मन 
and the, this is spoken by Brahma. My Lord, if one is favored by even a slight trace of the mercy of a lotus feet, he can understand the greatness of your personality. But those who speculate to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead are unable to know you, even though they continue to study the Vedas for many years. Hmm. Those who speculate to understand the Lord, no, they cannot understand. So, Krishna is teaching us what is the work that will satisfy Him uh, to become His devotee, offer obeisances to Him, worship Him, always thinking of Him. And today's verse is all about how to start thinking of Krishna. When our mind is preoccupied with so many things, how to start thinking of Krishna? In the previous session also we read the same thing. <clears throat> you see, in the previous verse 7.8, today is 7.9, but if you see 7.8 here, you see, Rasoham Apsukaunteya Prabhasmi Shashi Surya Yo Pranava Sarva Vedeshu Shabda Khe Paurusham Nrishu Six things are mentioned here which can remind us of Krishna. What are they? O son of Kunti, I am the taste of water. When we drink water, we feel a satisfaction. We should understand that only because of Krishna this is happening. The light of the sun. We all see sunlight. So Krishna says, only because of me, the sun is lighting up the whole world. And the moon, the light of the moon. In the day, sun, night, moon. We can always remember Krishna. The syllable Om in the Vedic mantras. Some people may be religious, they may chant mantras. Om, I am the Om. I am the sound in ether. Whenever there is sound, we can know that only because of Krishna again this is happening. And ability in man. There are so many people with different abilities. Artistic ability, strength, financial abilities, political abilities, so many different. Everybody is able in different ways. So where is that ability coming from? And I say, no, 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 it's my, I did it, I practiced and I put 10,000 years into it, so I, I, I deserve the credit. No. How could we put 10,000 hours into the practice of this? And even if we did put, unless Krishna gives us the intelligence how to learn that thing, we cannot learn. Like I gave, always give this example of this boxer, Muhammad Ali. Fastest boxer, world champion. But when Krishna withdrew the power of his, you know, brain became, I think he was a Parkinson's disease he had. So, and then gradually, he came to a point where he can't even move his hand, can't even move his leg, can't even remember what, you know. So, if the Lord withdraws the strength, we can do nothing. We will be absolutely nothing without His guidance, without His sanction. So, He is sitting in everyone's heart and making everything possible. And we don't need to even go that far to understand what is the ability. Our ability to digest food, we eat nicely. We don't even care how the food is being digested. We don't even know what is happening inside. Who is doing it? Uh, involuntary muscles. The scientists say involuntary muscles. What? You have a spasm or what? <laughs> is it a spasm? <laughs> there is a deliberate <laughs> spasm means it's out of control. You know? It is just shaking, trembling or whatever. So that that's not in, it's not involuntary muscles. It is not under our control, yes, but it is under somebody else's control. Our heart is pumping even though we are sleeping. We don't need to worry about pumping our heart so that we can keep our body alive. No, Krishna is doing this for us. We don't need to worry about pumping our heart. Eh, I'm sleeping, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, heart will go and then I'll die. No, I don't need to have this worry. Krishna is doing it. Mm-hmm. So, we have to understand Krishna's presence everywhere. Now, just like I cannot see the Prime Minister, but I can feel his presence everywhere throughout Singapore. There is law, for example. If I do something, if I say, the, if I do some crime, there will be police. That system is in order because there is a higher government supervising the whole system. And ultimately, there is this person, the Prime Minister, under whom everything 
all departments are working so i may not be personally at this point be able to see the prime minister but i can feel his presence by the the law and order that is going on in the country and everything is in order so that is because of his and the some development projects happen because of ultimately under his supervision he, he may delegate it to some uh, sub minister i mean under him now ultimately he is the um, supervisor of all the affairs of the country so similarly that is what krishna is hinting at here first see my presence understand my presence in everyday things you don't have to go very far. people say oh god is everywhere why should i go to temple yes god is everywhere but can you see him cannot then come to the temple and learn how to see him it's like english is everywhere why do i not know i don't need to go to school english is everywhere now there's a methodical way of learning it and then you can be perfect in your communication or mathematics or anything like that a systematic way to learn things a temple is a place where we learn it is a school for spiritual science temple is not a place just where we take some darshan and then and go away and that is good we are not saying not good that is not enough that is according to bhagavatam that is uh, similar to the animals visiting a holy place animals also visit holy places you know if you go to the holy places there are so many animals there what is the difference between those and uh, animals and us we can go and talk to the sadhus we can get some knowledge the animals cannot so if we just go to the holy place and then come out we are living like animals the real purpose of going to the holy place is to hear the message and if we miss this part and construct a whole religion without the core activity of hearing and chanting the name of god then it is the whole thing will crumble in no time that's why our, our religion is crumbling in no time why everything is falling apart why people want to even those who are so called you know hindutva and you know, all these things nowadays they are only sentimentally trying to revive it not again with knowledge oh nowadays there is a movement in india oh the hindu temples are not under the hindus control it is under government control funds are going to government they are fighting this now why did it start because first of all the so called followers they did not care the government took nice <laughs> you know advantage of that and now they are complaining and oh they have to take back the finances okay finances all is you know keep aside first of all where is the core activity of hearing where is the study of the vedic scriptures that is not being happening no 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 education so how how will it all revive it will not just by uh, reviving the symbols of the religion you will not revive the religion you have to revive the core activity of it which is shravanam kirtanam process roba therefore said temple life means shravanam kirtanam even if there is no structure if under a tree if people are hearing and chanting that is temple lord narayana says to narad muni naham tishtham vaikunthe i am not in vaikuntha or in the temple which is an embassy of vaikuntha naham tishtham vaikunthe naham yoginam hridaye shuva i am not in the really in the hearts of the yogis who actually yogis are supposed to meditate on the lord yogis are not just to blank the mind this is another rubbish they are supposed to meditate on the lord in the heart the paramatma so he says i am not really there also yatra gayanti mad bhaktah tatra tishthami narada i am always there where my devotees are discussing my past times and singing my glories there i am so the residence of the lord is a place where devotees are there not just an official place um you know some address no so that's why temple is necessary for the neophyte for the beginner for the novice we have to learn how to see god first of all in everyday things especially prabhupada used to say for the simple minded it is very simple to see the presence of god but for the crooked it will never be possible you see the grand arrangement of the cosmos is insufficient to convince the atheist that there is god whereas a simple flower will convince the theist that there is god one flower you see 
so much nice texture so much fragrance so much artistry it looks so nice colors are so nice texture is so nice the pattern is so nice if anybody paints a picture of a rose how much we appreciate the artist huh? but the real rose nobody appreciates the real artist this painting rose has no fragrance the real rose has fragrance you may say i i kept cctv i did not see anybody god coming and painting it why should i give credit to him whole night and day i put cctv there nothing nobody came <laughs> the lord's way of painting is not like our way of painting he, he does not need to come and sit down and paint every single rose his energies are so perfect that they can do automatically all this happens this way krishna says bijaham sarvabhutanam i am the seed of all existences the original fragrance of the earth punya gandha prithivyam cha right the original fragrance of the earth <clears throat> what is the original fragrance of the earth every other fragrance that is we, we know it is coming from the earth you see the orange seed is sown in that on the in the earth and the apple seed is also sown in the earth tomato also sown in the earth rice also sown in the earth. same soil but tastes and flavors are different where is the flavor coming from of course the earth only but can we extract that flavor no we extract flavor from mud it will be horrible smell you don't even want to see <laughs> but krishna can extract the orange uh, flavor from the earth we can't he can extract the coconut water and put it in the, we think we are very great we have invented bottle water bottle the coconut is a water bottle invented by the lord seal it's like there is a seal sometimes they tamper with the seal you cannot tamper with the coconut you open it and that's it finished and it's eco friendly not like the stupid plastic bottles causing a whole problem in the oceans and land so you see krishna is a perfect scientist he is already doing everything we th- we think we are very great by by a um, defective imitation of what the lord already does oh test you baby we are we are great scientists are great right the womb of the mother is a test tube you know, every uh, it is going on since millions of years no credit some person has done some test tube this thing ah now it is great scientific discovery now there is a transplant you know heart transplant liver transplant or what to speak of heart transplant head transplant also was done before ganesh how did he get his elephant head lord shiva transplanted elephant head onto him cross species human i mean he was a demigod the ganesh is a demigod an elephant head we don't even have we don't even know how to do it and even if the transplant is done it, the person looks horrible after that you know sometimes they have to do something some accident happens and then they graft the skin and all it, it, it doesn't look like the original right <coughs> and it's not a seamless uh, this thing is you know all the defects are there and it doesn't function ideally but in the ganesh and also in the daksha daksha prajapati he was killed by lord shiva after that goat head was put on top of him so he was having human form of course demigod form but goat head but still he was and after he got the goat head he was not behaving like a goat and meh he was not doing this he was chanting excellent prayers glorifying the lord and he apologized to lord shiva for his offensive behavior against him uh, so how can these things happen this science is un- unknown and how did the kauravas 100 sons of dhritarashtra come about test tubes in the in the ghee you know the the actually <coughs> the mother of the kauravas when she heard that uh, kunti devi already gave birth to yudhishthira she be- she became a little bit jealous feminine jealousy so she out of frustration she just hit her own womb why did my son not come out first so that he can be the king so d- she impulsively did that and then the whole uh, it was a miscarriage but uh, it was saved by who i think uh, vyasa. vyasa did so you know he the 100 pieces it was made into and then put into pots of ghee and then there was one small piece and that was put in the 101st pot 
and that small part became a girl uh, lakshmana name and then the hundred uh, became sons the kauravas not that she gave birth hundred times no so it has to be are miscarriage already still could revive and then made into hundred children so these technologies are all there it is not something you know, these guys are very um, accomplished or what huh. so anyway <coughs> krishna is saying so in this today's verse punya gandha prithivyam cha i am the original fragrance of the earth from which every other fragrance is coming so if you observe like this we can appreciate the presence of god in everything and that is how we should see the god in every see god or krishna in everything start with this first appreciate always think of me krishna is saying then you can come to me and then you will see him face to face actually this is not simply our imagination oh this is good oh god has created this but ultimately i will never be able to see the actual face of god no 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 we will be able to but first qualify ourselves patience uh, patiently let us first follow his instruction he is giving us hints how to remember him he said always think of me but how can i think of god always how can i think you can only think of someone always when you love that person you know when there is love story going on uh, when the student life college life many love stories going on so called love stories the guy is just studying something but his mind is on the girl and all movies indian movies are full of these stories <coughs> i don't need to explain more so when we love someone we can think of that person always even in the worst situation even the most tense situation we can think of that person so love so how to love krishna first appreciate him before you can love him you need to trust him before you trust him you need to appreciate him before you appreciate him you must know him if you don't know anything about him how to appreciate what he has done and how to gain the trust and how to gain the love so that's why krishna is beginning first appreciate what i have done my energy is front of you in front of your eyes everywhere i am the ability in man whatever man has created scientific discovery let's give it to them okay they have done something great but that is also krishna krishna has given the sanction that is only only then they could do if he decides that one brain one one nerve in the brain just snaps he will be paralyzed so krishna can do that but krishna did not do and therefore he had the facility he was the, he was given the intelligence and he could do something hmm. so punya gandha prithivyam cha tejas chasme vibhavaso i am the <coughs> heat in fire so basically he is saying that i am the active principle in everything that you see i am the life of all that lives the active principle in everything krishna says it's because of me that is this this thing when he says i am the fragrance i am the life of all the lives or i am the heat in fire it's not that we should now start worshiping heat we will have altar and then put heat there make it hot and then do aarti that <laughs> no this is i am the heat means it's not that heat is krishna no that's why this is this is achinta bheda bheda tatva you see maya tatam idam sarvam jagad avyakta murtina matsthani sarvabhutani na chaham tesh vavasthitah by me in my unmanifested form this entire universe is pervaded all beings are in me but i am not in them probab gave the very nice example you know the ford car the car is ford but ford is not car right car is ford why because the original person who started the company was i think alfred ford <coughs> so the car is ford but ford is not the car he is a person <laughs> he is running all the operations so similarly heat is krishna i mean krishna is heat means uh, heat is not krishna so in other words under his direction everything is going on and that krishna actually explains this in this verse in the 
Fire burns out of fear of me. You see today's verse. I am the heat in fire. Fire burns out of fear of me. And death goes about taking its toll out of fear of me. So, only under Krishna's supervision everything is working in strict order. Yak chakshuresha savita sakalak grahanam Raja samastha suramurti rasesha teja Yasyagnaya Brahmati Sambrita Kala Chakra Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami You see the sun which is so powerful if heat of a f- of fire is so burning what to speak of sun? Millions of degrees, right? Now that powerful sun which is the king of all planets the sun who is the king of all planets full of infinite effulgence the image of the good soul is as the eye of this world is the eye of this world I adore the primeval Lord Govinda in pursuance of whose order the sun performs his journey mounting the wheel of time. So this Yasya Agnaya, Agnya means order, whose order the sun is following and keeping itself in orbit. Govinda Madhapurusha Mantamahambaja. So every day we see the sun rising and setting, it is by the order of Govinda. That's why there is, there is not the slightest delay. That's why we can calculate from our astrological calculations the sunrise that can uh, that happens after 100 years. We can calculate the exact time at which the sun will rise 100 years later. Why? How can we? It's not our greatness that we can calculate. <laughs> it is because the Lord gave us the formula how to calculate. <laughs> it's astrological science. And the sun will never disobey that order. Strictly according to schedule, the sun does its activity. So, on whose order? You think it's a big bang that just caused everything just happening like that? No. Perfect order. <coughs> so in this way we can observe the presence of the Lord everywhere. I am the heat and fire. I am the life of all that lives. Now the dead body. What is the difference between living and dead body? The soul lives. So the active principle again. So we should seek out the active, active principle and everything and find that this is actually not only active principle, even the passive, the, the everything is energy of Krishna. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartate. Krishna is saying, everything that we can perceive and we can not perceive, everything is coming from Krishna. Krishna is saying, everything is coming from me. Aham means I. I am the source. People think, oh, this is very egoistic. How can you say like that? That is not egoistic. Egoistic is when you are not that and when I say that I am God. That is ego. False ego. When I am not something and I claim to be something more than what I actually am. Uh, that is ahankar. Like if I am the doer, if I say I am the doer, I did this. That is ahankar. Because ultimately I have to understand that by Krishna's sanction I could be an instrument in his plan. And I did this. But Krishna does not need to say like that. When he says, I did this, that is not ego. That is fact. Because <laughs> only he can do anything. <laughs> so we should understand, when Krishna speaks like that, I am the source of everything. There is nobody superior to me when he says. That is not pride. That is a fact. When we say, that is pride. Because it is not a fact. <laughs> it is an inflated ego. Like a balloon. Just make it, make ourselves look big. But one poke, boom, everything gone. Can't even see where the balloon is. <laughs> we are like that. We inflate ourselves and think that we are very big, vanity, puffed up. But our reality is that we are nothing. Anoraniyam. We are, you know what is our size? Keshagra Shatabhaga Shatadha Kalpita Sacha Jeeva Bhago Savignaya Sachanantyaya Kalpata. If you take a, one hair from your head <coughs> and see the top of the hair, the tip, not the length of the hair the cross-section of the hair. 
And if you cut that into 10,000 parts, ah, that one part is the size of the soul. Size of the soul is mentioned. It's not that it is something abstract. No, it is mentioned. One ten thousand, the tip of the hair. What? Why? Why do we think we are very big? Very small, actually. If I think I am big, that is ahankar, pride. But when Krishna says I am the biggest, I am nobody superior to me. That is a fact. He is just being honest. Why are you angry with him? <laughs> if somebody is angry with him for those two statements, why? He is not rooted in fact. Because he thinks Krishna has to be one of him, like him. I cannot say like that. How can Krishna say like that? Right? As if you and Krishna are the same. So, and I am the penance of all ascetics. Everybody achieves something with some hard work. That hard work may be called penance. I am the penance of all ascetics. And especially of the ascetics who try to realize Krishna. And any hard work. We can only work hard if we have the capability to work hard. A disabled person can do something, but not everything, right? So if we are able, if we are able to work hard, that is again because of the blessings of Krishna. And when he withdraws it, we cannot do anything. Arjuna says, I he was the greatest archer. He said, I was the greatest archer and nobody could even defeat me. The Bhishma, Karna, Drona, uh, Ashwatthama, all these big big warriors could not touch a hair on my head because of Krishna. He did not, he was not proud that, oh, I am such a great warrior that none of them could touch my hair. No, it is because of Krishna. <laughs> great generals like Bhishma, Drona, Karna, Bhurishrava, Susharma, Shalya, Jayadrat, Balika, all directed their invincible weapons against me. But by His, or Lord Krishna's grace, they could not even touch a hair on my head, just as the demons could not affect Prahlad Maharaj, the supreme devotee of Lord Narasimhadev, with, with the weapons they used against him. You see? Uh, <clears throat> and he, he says that the same Gandiva bow, <clears throat> when Krishna left this world, Arjuna was considering, I was so great that even the Devatas, Lord Shiva was pacified with me, was pleased with me and gave me the Pashupatastra, his personal weapon. Lord Shiva, who is the greatest archer in this universe? Of course, after Krishna. <coughs> but he himself was pleased with me. And now, what happened after Krishna left? There is something happened. Arjuna could not even fight some cowherd men. You know, He lost the war against some cowherd people who could not even shoot one arrow. Who came with some sticks and he lost to them. You know that? What is that? 1, 5, 1, 15, 20, what? Hmm, 1, 15, 21. So you see, I have the very same Gandiva bow, the same arrows, the same chariot drawn by the same horses. I use them as the same Arjuna to whom all the kings offered their due respects. But in the absence of Lord Krishna, all of them at a moment's notice have become null and void. It is exactly like offering clarified butter into ashes, accumulating money with a magic wand, or sowing seeds in barren land. So it has become useless now. Without the empowerment of Krishna, that's why he says, Paurusham Nirshu, I am the ability in man. If a man can do anything or a woman can do anything, it is only because of Krishna's empowerment. Without that Krishna's empowerment, when Krishna withdraws that, Nobody can do anything. For example, women also. They can give birth to child. <clears throat> After certain age, they cannot. Krishna withdraws. So, we should always understand that Krishna is the controller of everything. Hmm. So, that is the whole idea. So, if we can see His presence everywhere in every aspect of our lives, and that is what Bhagavad Gita is training us to do, how to see Krishna in everything. Yes, he is everywhere, but how to see him? This is how we start. Then eventually it will even intensify, intensify, come to the perfectional stage where we can actually see the form of Krishna every time. Santaha sadaiva hridayeshu vilokayanti. Like Hanuman, he just could tear open his chest and show Sita Ram there. What confidence, you know, you need to do that. 
if i <laughs> do like this i'll die <laughs> open heart surgery <laughs> so and i mean people doctors are doing open heart surgery they don't see anybody there but how could hanuman show not only he could see but he can show others also this is the thing about a pure devotee not only he can see god when one becomes perfect not only he can see god he can show it to others also he can show everybody the path how to go to him that's why there is this verse 10 231 shrimad bhagavatam svayam samuktirya sudustaram sudustaram dyuman bhavarnavam bhimam madabhra sauhrada bhavat padam bho ruhanava matrate nithay yata sadanugraho bhavan O Lord, who resembles the shining sun, you are always ready to fulfill the desire of your devotee, and therefore you are known as a desire. Three one chakal patra. Now, when acharyas completely take shelter under your lotus feet, in order to cross the fierce ocean of nations, they leave behind on earth the method by which they cross. And because you are very merciful to your other devotees, you accept this method to help them. So the pure devotee who has reached the Lord. he leaves behind on earth the method by which he crossed so that will be the guiding light for the entire humanity so they can take advantage of that and also come to god and krishna himself is also giving hints now how to remember him in every aspect so this is called krishna consciousness to be always conscious of krishna people say why why your meaning is what what is your movement krishna consciousness what what consciousness krishna consciousness means to always be conscious of krishna that's all so how to be conscious of krishna how to see his presence everywhere this is how so this is our request and the best way we can do in this kali yuga apart from you know knowing that he is a taste of water he is a light of sun moon <coughs> chant the name of krishna directly direct connect connection with krishna krishna's name and krishna are non different so chant his name and in kali yuga there is the best process in any situation we can remember krishna and by chanting more and more about him uh, his name the more and more we re- realize knowledge about him that's like <coughs> last verse will show this you see tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam ye namam upayanti te to those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love i give the understanding by which they can come to me so krishna will enlighten us the more we are constantly devoted to him and that devotion starts with chanting so that's our request so please take to this chanting if you have already taken up take it more seriously and if you have not taken it up start it and if you are not convinced take so many books are there your whole lifetime will not be enough to complete them that much come material is there to read about krishna So I would like to stop here. Any questions or comments on this topic? Any doubts? There's nothing on the Facebook. So all right, if there's nothing, we'll stop here. Shri Bhagavad Gita ki, Shri Prabhu Pad ki, Tai.